everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Adam Cellini. Topping our news tonight, the manhunt for a 15-year-old murder suspect from Florida is over. Border agents arresting the teen as he was trying to cross into Canada, driving the, vi the murder victim's car without a license. ABC's Brad Milkey shows us what led to that arrest. 15-year-old Logan Mott is now in custody, suspected of killing his 53-year-old grandmother in Florida. He was arrested trying to cross the border into Canada near Buffalo. Logan had traveled more than 1,000 miles from Neptune Beach, Florida in his grandmother's car. On Friday evening, CBP officers at the Peace Bridge encountered Logan Mott, who had made a wrong turn onto the bridge. During the primary inspection, officers became aware that Mr. Mott was the subject of a warrant for grand theft auto out of Florida. On Wednesday, Logan and his grandmother were supposed to pick up his father, Eric Mott, from the airport, but they never showed up. Later, the father discovered that two houses had been ransacked, his mother's and his own. The processing of the home on Thursday revealed evidence of foul play and potential criminal violence inside, and then late in the day, a potential grave site outside. The body found in a shallow grave in the yard matches the grandmother's description, but so far has not been positively identified. Mott has been detained and is currently being held by the Buffalo Police Department on the grand theft auto warrant. No word yet when Logan will be returned to Florida. Brad Milkey, ABC News, New York. And back here at home, we are learning new details tonight about the victims killed in that fatal uh, interstate crash on Thanksgiving. The crash in Hillsborough County leaving three people dead, including a Bradenton man and a couple on their way to Tampa. Recently engaged Lachey waiters of Bradenton and Yvette Alexander of Ruskin were heading southbound on I-75 when a wrong way uh, driver collided with them. The driver identified as 21-year-old Justin Lakin from Bradenton, son of a former Manatee County judge. John Lakin. The crash killing all three of those involved. Yvette's mother recalling the last moment she saw her daughter. Okay, when uh, I'm going to go to Tampa to drop off my friend, she gave us a kiss and then she went down the stairs. I feel like a part of me was ripped out of me. Yep. Yvette's parents' message to all drivers, please pay attention. It can make all the difference in your life and someone else's. A Charlotte County Sheriff's deputy has been cited in an accident that took place this afternoon. The Florida Highway Patrol reporting that Port Charlotte deputy Brad Armistead failed to complete a uh, failed to complete a stop at a stop sign entering an intersection in Inglewood and colliding with a van. Both drivers were treated for minor injuries at the Inglewood Hospital. Well, power has been restored to Northport customers tonight after a fire this morning caused multiple outages. The Northport police sharing this photo of a power line, uh, excuse me, of a power line on fire at Pan American and Willow Creek. At this time, it is uncertain what exactly started that blaze, but Florida Power and Light were quickly called out to the scene. Power was restored less than an hour later. And remember, for updates on local and breaking news, you can download the latest updated version of our news app. iPhone users need to go to the App Store and re-download that app. Just search for WWSB or My Sun Coast. Well, did you make a purchase today at a locally owned business? If so, you're likely one of 71 million Americans supporting Small Business Saturday. ABC 7's Erica Jackson spoke to these small business owners today to find out how the initiative makes an impact here locally. American Express initiated Small Business Saturday in 2010. It says there are nearly two and a half million small businesses in Florida, or nearly 99.8% of all businesses in the state. The National Retail Federation estimates 71 million Americans are making a purchase on Saturday, and 76% of those shoppers say they are supporting small businesses. A new bill is under consideration in the Florida legislature to make Small Business Saturday a tax-free holiday. That would make a big impact locally since most of the 150 shops and restaurants in downtown Sarasota are independently owned. When the smaller businesses go away, I think you're going to see a uh, depletion of the economy. So to me, I think it's the backbone of the economy. Small businesses in Florida also help the economy by bringing down the unemployment rate. According to the U.S. Small Business Administration, small businesses in Florida created 102,000 jobs in 2014, and 42% of people were working for small businesses that year. Reporting in downtown Sarasota, Erica Jackson, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. 
All right, Erica, thank you very much. And I'm sure it doesn't hurt to have some nice weather. If you're hoping people walk in and out of your stores, uh, let's head over to Steve Newman in for Wendy Ross this weekend, Steve. Thanks, Adam. Not only nice weather here, but across most of the country, meaning there are no airport delays in any of the major airports that we fly in and out of Sarasota, Atlanta, LaGuardia, Chicago, and Charlotte, all pretty much on time with a couple exceptions, of course, here and there. I don't see any changes tomorrow or even Monday, unless you're heading out west, San Francisco, Seattle, and even Denver might have some delays on Monday. Well, right now, uh, after the skies cleared this morning, there were some middle clouds cleared out. We had a spectacular day. There's some troublesome showers out here that some are thinking might move over Charlotte Harbor to the south later tonight and tomorrow morning. Uh, and our future radar prediction, I, I think it's overblown, uh, again, to the south of Sarasota, Bradenton, and Venice, but it does show that there is some moisture coming in from the Gulf, but it would be very light, and it's not going to mess up your Sunday. Temperatures cooling off tonight very slowly, getting into the mid and upper 50s toward dawn tomorrow. Our complete forecast for the week ahead coming up in a few minutes. Adam. All right, thank you very much, Steve. Well, following accusations and allegations made against powerful people in politics and entertainment, more and more women are stepping forward about their own experiences. But this problem is not restricted to one area or one industry. And as ABC 7's Jess Dowdrick shows us, it's closer to home than you may think. It's that Vegas style, uh, you know, what happens in Tallahassee stays in Tallahassee. As an activist for years, Susan Nylon has been around the sexual scandals that surround the state capitol. As a woman, the first thing you notice is that you're judged upon your appearance. Um, it's really important to get somebody's attention because you're among a lot of, shall we say, a lot of suits. And so it's implied that in order to stand out, it's not just the argument that you're giving, but it's how pleasant you are, uh, what you look like. Uh, who you spend time with, um, it, the relationships that you build tend to be more important than the issue that you're up there for. She calls it degrading. Tallahassee is a completely different animal. Making it hard to focus on the issues. She says instead, women are worried about their appearance. How you see the behavior of our representatives up in Tallahassee are quite different than what you would see down here. Playing out right now in Tallahassee, State Senator Jack Latvala, who's seeking the Republican gubernatorial nomination, is fending off allegations he groped and harassed at least six women. Democratic Senate leader Jeff Clemens just resigned his office after acknowledging an extramarital affair with a lobbyist. And on the heels of Clemens' resignation, an investigation is launched after a camera is found by Senate Majority Leader Oscar Brainon in the hallway of a condo building where he and other lawmakers live in Tallahassee. I'm not surprised about any of it. Ten years ago, when former state representative Keith Fitzgerald took office, he was hearing similar rumors or allegations of sexual misconduct. As you have a lot of people who are working 300 miles away from their home and family. They're up there temporarily. There's a lot of alcohol. So certainly flirtatious behavior, people sort of using uh, sex as a kind of currency in affairs and that sort of thing. That's really common. Fitzgerald says he was shocked to find out that Tallahassee was what he describes as a work setting with a hypersexualized atmosphere. But I would just warn anyone from the outside who thinks that maybe their party or their side is free of this and the other side or the perpetrators, it doesn't work like that. There are bad actors and there are good actors on both sides of the aisle. But current state lawmakers seem to see it quite differently. State Representative Joe Gruders of Sarasota says the allegations are being portrayed as a rampant issue in Tallahassee when that isn't the case. Always have to wonder when people come out, especially if you're running for higher office or if you're trying to do something specific, if it's uh, motivated by a true intent to, to, to rid this building of uh, bad people or if it's uh, politically motivated to eliminate one of your political opponents. But regardless, if the allegations are substantiated, Gruters wants to see those lawmakers out of the state capitol. At the end of the day, uh, the legislature should have a zero tolerance policy. Uh, we should try to focus on uh, making sure that all allegations get fully uh, investigated and that we take care of uh, any problem areas that we have. 
All right, that was ABC 7's Jess Dowdrick. Thank you very much, Jess. Well, still to come here on ABC 7, after days of searching and an amazing rescue, we learn the identities of three U.S. Navy servicemen who went missing after a crash overseas. Plus, an active weekend for Christmas tree sales. A look at what tree sellers are expecting. If you're between 50 and 85 years old, call the number on your screen right now for free information on how to save your family thousands of dollars. We're Family Love Plans, and we've been helping families just like yours for over 30 years. The average funeral today can cost up to $10,000 or more, but the most you'll get from government benefits is just $255. How will your family pay the difference? At Family Love Plans, we can help you and your family. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam and your plan can't be canceled. Better still, your rate will never go up and your benefits will never go down. Get your free information about our senior plans. Just answer a few simple questions and receive approval right over the phone. Call 1-800-707-3608. That's 1-800-707-3608. This is an important message for anyone with Medicare. You may be eligible for an all-in-one Medicare plan that combines hospital, medical, and prescription drug coverage together with extra benefits that may include dental, vision, hearing aids, and much more. Some of these plans have a $0 monthly premium regardless of your income. That's right. For one low plan premium, or in some cases a $0 premium, you may be able to get coverage for your hospital visits, doctor appointments, prescription drugs, routine dental care, eyeglasses and contact lenses, hearing aids, and possibly more. Today may be the first time you've heard about this type of Medicare plan. The advisors at the Medicare.com helpline are licensed insurance agents who will explain more when you call. Call now to see if you qualify. Call the number on your screen now. Call now to see if you qualify for these benefits. You worked hard for your Medicare. Now is the time for your Medicare to work hard for you. Not affiliated with or acting on behalf of any government agency or program. Oh. Okay, back. Serving part-time as a soldier in the Army National Guard can give you a head start on your career. Gain practical experience with technology and equipment to get an edge in the civilian world. Learn about the paid training and career opportunities available to you at NationalGuard.com. Welcome back. The U.S. Navy has released the names of three sailors who were lost after the crash of a plane this week in the Philippine Sea, two of whom are from Florida. Brian Grosso, an airman apprentice and Pensacola native, is presumed dead. The Navy also reporting the names of Jacksonville Lieutenant Stephen Combs and Louisiana native Airman Matthew Cal Calastri. The three were among 11 who were on board the C-2A Greyhound that went down on Wednesday southeast of Okinawa, Japan. It was headed for the USS Ronald Reagan. The other eight people on that plane were rescued. We're learning more tonight about the deadly attack Friday on Egyptian civilians by Islamic ex extremists. The death toll now up to more than 300 people with over over 100 more who are injured. Militants attacking a crowded mosque during Friday's prayers in the Sinai P Peninsula, setting off explosives and then spraying the congregation with bullets as they knelt and prayed. The attackers opening fire and reportedly shooting into that mosque from four off-road vehicles surrounding the building and the militants blocking off escape routes by blowing up cars. It's very sad. It's pathetic. It's unhumanitic. It doesn't represent any sort of Islamic principles or Islamic faith. Islam doesn't allow anyone to kill it, anyone to harm. President Trump condemned that attack on Twitter, calling it horrible and cowardly. 
Well, this weekend is expected to be a big season for Christmas tree sales. We spoke with a group today who has set up shop on Fruitville Road, their first day of sales starting Friday, and they say 54 trees were sold right there on day one. Shoppers say they're always on the lookout for the best tree, and the real trees just can't be beat by those that are bought in a store. We've had a fake tree for a while. We feel like it's just a better experience. Plus the real Christmas trees, they do smell better, so it'll like make the house smell like Christmas. The group says from that one location, they expect to sell over 600 trees before Christmas. And I don't know about you, Steve. The smell is nice, but cleaning up those needles can be a little tricky it after is. the holiday season. And some are allergic to having live trees That's in true. the house. You're I was in parties. I outgrew it when I was a little kid, but uh, <laughs> it is nice to have that smell inside the house. What a great day after three crummy days. Yeah, beautiful. Let's, let's just call it crummy because it was cloudy and damp <laughs> and the sun didn't come out, but we had a good Thanksgiving, most of us, and today a great weekend. And if you were lucky enough to get to the beach, as these people you can see, they're right on the water a little earlier today did. Uh, spectacular. Lots of sunshine. It warmed up very nicely into the 70s. And at sunset, a beautiful sunset indeed happened about 535 today. Temperatures across the state, the cool spot, 55 at Pensacola, the warm spot, Key West, and Miami with 73. Across our viewing area, pretty much in the uh, low upper 60s to low 70s, 70 at Boca Grande, 70 at Venice, and 69 at Longboat Key. Our current temperature at the airport, 66, our dew point 59, humidity 78%. Now, the high today was a couple three degrees warmer than I thought, which put it right at normal, 77, but no one's complaining about that. And it didn't rain today, and we have about an inch and a third below normal for this time of year, but because of a wet year so far, we're still well above normal. 14 inches plus. Now, right on the edge of the radar scopes range, you were seeing some showers out here in the Gulf of Mexico, and if we put them into motion, they kind of look like they're approaching the coast. They're really probably not going to arrive, but there's a chance down around Charlotte Harbor we could see some overnight. And when the sun was up in visible light, we could see them out there in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico in this GO-16 image. Uh, again, I don't think we're going to have any problems tonight or tomorrow with rain. They are having some rain and even some snow around Toronto right now. This is only weather we're having across the country until you get to the Pacific Northwest where folks in Seattle and uh, Tacoma wish it would stop raining. It's like day after day of rain, but that storm is going to spread south to San Francisco as we move for the rest of the weekend. If you're traveling back home, if you're down here enjoying the holiday and flying back home, I don't think tomorrow will be a weather problem. No systems really pose any threat to cause travel delays, at least from the atmosphere. There could be technical problems, but uh, it looks pretty good and temperatures not that cold up north. 44 at Chicago, Toronto right now, 41, 85 at Phoenix for people uh, down there, warmer than here in Florida at the moment, actually. Here are weather headlines as we look at uh, the upcoming week. A few sprinkles in the south tomorrow, late tonight, tomorrow, tomorrow midday, but I don't think we're going to see any over most of our viewing area, meaning we'll have mostly sunny days, and there's going to be a slow warming trend as we move through the next week up to about 80, 81 degrees. Now, the RPM uh, computer model Futurecast has those showers out in the Gulf, high pressure over us, pretty much a broad high pressure area. And here is a front that will come through tomorrow afternoon, but it's not going to really do anything. Now, this model does not show the showers reaching land. It's just out there dissipating. The front comes through without any rain or any big weather effects, just reinforcing the drier air over the state. And that will continue right on through the next week until about Wednesday night, Thursday, we could see some showers. Out on the water tomorrow, great day again. Northeasterly winds in the morning, northerly in the afternoon to 10 knots. Seas two feet or less. Light chop on the bay. Beach temperature tomorrow, 75. The water temperature, 72. And with the sun so low on the horizon right now, just in the south, four is the UV index. Not that bad, but you still should use sunscreen. Here's my forecast for tonight. Partly cloudy skies are low temperature 48, uh, 58 rather, right on the money for normal with light winds. And tomorrow, a mostly sunny and mild day, high temperature 76 with those north winds being reinforced 5 to 10 miles an hour. And here's your seven day outlook showing we'll have uh, pretty much a warming trend for Sunday, Monday and Tuesday up to 80 by midweek. And then another front comes through giving us a 20% chance of showers Wednesday night and dry for next weekend. Adam. Now, sports. Rivalry weekend in college football, but the one up in Gainesville, not really on too many people's radars today because for the first time in nearly six decades, Florida and Florida State meet with losing records. So a relatively even matchup, right? Well, first quarter, Felipe Franks is stripped from behind. That ball rolls right to Jacob Pugh for a defensive touchdown. Puts the Knolls on top. Florida down 10 in the second quarter. Franks' pass picked off by Levanta Taylor. 
It's another defensive score for Florida State. Now Franks would end the half by connecting with Brandon Powell on a nice fade to the corner of the end zone, but he can't overcome three interceptions and a lost fumble. Florida State taking the Florida Cup 38-22. Uh, Florida State could stay bowl eligible if they win against Louisiana Monroe next Saturday. Now the matchup today was the Iron Bowl between top ranked Alabama and number six Auburn and it's the Tigers jumping out to an early 7-0 lead on a jump pass from carry on Johnson. But Bama answering with some trickery of their own. Jalen Hurts faking the run, pulls up, throws it 36 yards to Jerry Judy for a touchdown. Now Auburn would get into field goal range before the half, go into the locker room with a three-point lead and then knock off their second top-ranked team of the season. Auburn beating their rival 26-14. Now off to Ann Arbor hosting the game this afternoon between number nine Ohio State and their rival Michigan. The eight and three Wolverines coming out hot with the first two touchdowns of the game. First on a two-yard run by Khalid Hill, then a, a three-yard pass from John O'Korn to uh, Sean McKeon, making it a 14-point Michigan lead. But the Buckeyes would come back up 24-20 with under two to go. Mike Weber putting the nail in the coffin, 25-yard touchdown run. Buckeyes win 31-20. Michigan head coach John Harbaugh now 0-3 against the Buckeyes. Now, uh, speaking of head coaches, Chip Kelly is coming back to college football. The former Oregon head coach returning to the Pac-12 as the new leader of the UCLA Bruins. Kelly was 46-7 and with a national championship appearance in four seasons with Oregon, then jumped to the NFL where he had a combined losing record with Philadelphia and San Francisco. The Florida Gators were reportedly targeting Kelly to fill their own head coaching vacancy. UCLA has reportedly signed him to a five-year contract worth more than $23 million. And good news, Florida fans, basketball season is back, and the Gators look to be picking up right where they left off last season. Number 7 Florida and number 17 Gonzaga meeting for a double overtime thriller at the Phil Knight Invitational last night in Oregon. Senior guard Chris Chioza finishing with 26 points, including that huge and one right there in the first overtime. Then a back-breaking three-pointer in double overtime. It helps the Gators to a 111-105 victory. Florida 5-0 so far this season. They'll face top-ranked Duke on Sunday. More to come here on ABC7. Stay with us. You have type 2 diabetes, which requires daily blood monitoring. If you have diabetes, are you on Medicare, Obamacare, or other health insurance? If you answered yes, you may be eligible for diabetic testing supplies at little to no out-of-pocket cost to you. Our accredited staff will handle all of your paperwork for free. And best of all, your diabetic testing supplies are shipped directly to your home for free. Call now to see if you qualify for a meter upgrade and a free pedometer to monitor your daily walking. Use alternate testing sites, a smaller blood sample, and even hear your results out loud. Will you qualify for diabetic testing supplies and an upgraded meter? covered by Medicare, Obamacare, or health insurance at little to no out-of-pocket cost to you? Find out for free by calling the Diabetes Resource Center at 1-800-394-1098. That's 1-800-394-1098. 1-800-394-1098. America, drug addiction is plaguing our great country. Every minute of every day, one of our citizens is rushed to the emergency room with a drug overdose. Many will never leave, never see the dawn of a new tomorrow in our great nation. Call Make America Sober Again now, before this disease destroys your family, your friends, your country. If you or someone you know is struggling with a drug or alcohol addiction, make the next minute in your life count. Make America Sober Again is committed to connecting you with someone compassionate and caring to help you right now. Call now and be connected to a treatment center in our network. Call Make America Sober Again now. Call 800-793-6592. That's 800-793-6592. I'm a scientist. Recycling takes a team. Why don't you let me and me help you out? Everyone plays a part. Don't trash. I love taking stuff apart and building new things out of it. What could be treasure? Pal's my most advanced android. <gasps> this is awesome. 
You haven't seen anything yet. Give your cardboard box another life. Recycle. Check out mysuncoast.com slash dining, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. We'll take a look at what Canadian officials are calling a fairly unusual occurrence. I think that would stand true anywhere. A moose on the loose leading police on a wild chase after it galloped onto a runway at an airport in Markham. The animal then wandering into a residential area, as you can see there, where it ran through backyards and across driveways. The moose startling drivers on a highway even at one point. But it finally calmed down and returned to a wooded area safely. Interesting. Well, the Venice Holiday Parade is now underway. The 40-year-old tradition kicking off the holiday season in downtown Venice. ABC7 is down there getting a nice view of that action from our own spot in the parade. We join over 100 other local companies, schools, churches, and music groups getting everyone excited for Santa. Hundreds of people have been prepping to see. This is an important message for anyone with Medicare. You may be eligible for an all-in-one Medicare plan that combines hospital, medical, and prescription drug coverage together with extra benefits that may include dental, vision, hearing aids, and much more. Some of these plans have a $0 monthly premium regardless of your income. That's right. For one low plan premium, or in some cases a $0 premium, you may be able to get coverage for your hospital visits, doctor appointments, prescription drugs, routine dental care, eyeglasses and contact lenses, hearing aids, and possibly more. Today may be the first time you've heard about this type of Medicare plan. The advisors at the Medicare.com helpline are licensed insurance agents who will explain more when you call. Call now to see if you qualify. Call the number on your screen now. Call now to see if you qualify for these benefits. You worked hard for your Medicare. Now is the time for your Medicare to work hard for you. Not affiliated with or acting on behalf of any government agency or program. If you're over the age of 50 and considering buying an annuity in the next 60 days, I have some important news for you. Don't buy an annuity until you understand the pros and cons of annuities. A free book to help you maximize your retirement income from television host and three-time author Josh Melberg has been released. This book reveals little-known truths about annuity strategies in simple-to-understand terms. Grab a pen right now because we are about to offer you this free book that unlocks the five little-known secrets we believe baby boomers and seniors should know before buying an annuity. Call 800-307-2040 now and you'll receive a free copy of Josh Milberg's book, Next Gen Annuity Strategies Revealed. As a bonus, we'll also send you the number one mistakes retirees are making with their investments today and a free DVD on how you can get up to 33% more income in retirement. Call 800-307-2040 to have your free information kit rushed to your door. Again, that's 800-307-2040. Everyone's buzzing about Suncoast View. I like watching Suncoast View. I like the Suncoast View. The cooking segments. I love the recipes. The theater segments are terrific. Join Stephanie Roberts, Linda Carson, and Bo Beth Yates for hot topics, everyday issues, celebrities, food, fashion, fitness, and everything in between. Nothing is off limits. They're just fun. For smart, fun talk in the afternoon, watch Suncoast View. Weekdays at 4 on ABC7. First Alert Hurricane Guide arms you with vital information to protect your family and property when severe weather threatens the Sun Coast, including how to create your readiness plan and survival kit. Visit mysuncoast.com and download yours today. Check out My Sun Coast Dining on mysuncoast.com. <laughs> 